Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell over in um, uh, Westboro. But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. Uh, if you've been to any presentations that I've done, it's you You know that Frank and Mary have a very simple goal in life. They're seniors. They want to live in their house till they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. And if that's Northborough, that means they want to be right here. They don't want to go far away. And, and the point of these shows is to really acquaint you, if you identify with Frank and Mary, as it, with the programs that are maybe of interest to you and the people that may be of interest to you as seniors here in Northborough. So I live in far away Marlboro and not in Northboro. And so I need a, needed a great co-host to find those people. And Liz Tridiak, who became your senior center director. Oh God, Liz, it's all, it's like six months now, seven months ago, a long time. April, April. April, so yeah. <laughs> wow, it's just eternity it seems ago, right? Uh, has been finding folks and has got some wonderful guests for us today. Liz, whom do we have today? We have with us today, Larry Hemstreet and Don Dodson. Um, both are involved with Trinity Church, but they also are involved with a hundred other things here in town. Um, and how this came about, Arthur, is we received this email from Trinity Church letting us know that they were involved in this project called um, the Gale Street Store that was rehabbed and turned into um, condominiums. And affordable housing is such a huge topic, especially for seniors. I figured we have to have these folks on here because they just won a big award as well. So Larry and Don, would you mind um, introducing yourselves and telling us a little bit more about what you uh, do here in town and how you got involved with this project? I'm Larry Hemstreet, um, member of Trinity Church, been on the property committee. Uh, I'm also a realtor in town, uh, working for Remax. Um, and uh, had always been working on uh, habitat builds. And when the when the uh, call came out for people to work over there, um, I joined and worked a, a, a lot over there. Uh, and then Don can fill in more. Hi, I'm Donald Dodson, also a member of Trinity Church. Um, about uh, in 2006, uh, I was asked to get on the board of Trico, which was the owner of that property of the, the two houses. Uh, I then was the president or manager then and, until the time that uh, we sold it off to the affordable housing group here in town. Uh, I also had been involved with some of the habitat work uh when they started construction i got involved and i was uh worked on the project up through the finishing of that which happened in uh, march of uh, 2019. All right so this building is actually located on main street here in northborough correct correct 35 it's the uh, there's it's 3739 is the actual address for that big building mm -hmm. and for people who are driving down the street where is that in relation to other things on main street it's almost across the street from the library it's next to trinity church the big white church uh, it's it's the house with the big white pillars around it Okay, and it has some historical significance because it belonged to uh, Captain Gale, was it? Yes. Yes, it, it was. My understanding is it was originally the general store in Northborough, and it actually resided on the property um, that the Gale Library was built on. And uh -huh. at one point in time, um, back about 1874 or 94, 94, um, it was moved across the street from the 
where the Gale Library is now to its current location. Great. So this property, um, it became available. And how how did it come to be? A who made that decision? Who who was the who led the way on that? The the Trinity bought the property properties um, back in the 73, 74 time frame. And uh, at that time, Trinity had decided it would be low income housing, uh, okay. rental units. And there were a number of rental units in each of the two buildings. The smaller building had two and Don helped me. The bigger building had, I think, had three. Four. Four. Had four, four apartments. And um, Trinity, as a, as a congregation, um, we've been aging and taking care of the property became more and more difficult for us. And so the, the decision was made that we, we would look for ways to uh, continue the value of having affordable housing in Northboro, uh, but change the ownership. And uh, so there was a lot of work that went on behind the scenes with uh, um, Habitat and Trinity and the, uh, Don, what was the group in Northboro? It's the Afford Affordable Housing Committee, Coalition. I guess they call it. It's a, a group set up to uh, look into managing affordable housing in the town. Mm -hmm. so, so, by the way, I, I, if I can just be curious, so there was this period from like the 1970s until fairly recently when you you folks at the at the church just managed this property and and rented it out to you know to folks who you know who who just needed affordable housing. But that that's that that's a huge thing. That's that's a long period of time, right? And and so and you and would the, did the church just own it at all of those at all of those years? No, the church actually set up a separate corporation called Trico, Trinity Realtor uh, Invest uh, Investment Management Company, and uh, and we managed the. Uh, six apartments, yes, during that time period. Uh, the, the buildings were not in great shape. They're both old buildings. Uh, couldn't afford to really bring them up to modern or anything, but they were good enough. They were in good shape in terms of livable space and uh, at an affordable price. Right. I mean, it's just, it just seems it's, uh, it's, it's, kind of amazing to me. I don't know many churches that have gone to that extent to actually really support affordable housing for a long, over a long period of time. That's really, that's quite something, right? <laughs> there were people that lived there almost the whole time. Right. That's terrific. And, and so, and so, I'm sorry, Liz, I just wanted to, I was curious about that. <laughs> So I, when I was researching this project a little more, um, I was coming across so many different names of agencies and people who were involved in um, restoring the building and getting it um, transformed into these four new condos for families. And the list is huge. It's Trinity Church, Northboro Affordable Housing, Habitat for Humanity, um, the Selectmen, the CPC Historical Commission, Assabet Valley Tech was involved with doing some plumbing and electrical work in Algonquin. There were area businesses like Home Goods who did day long projects. It just seemed like such a huge community undertaking to transform this building. And now there's, is it four families who live there? It's four condominiums now? That's correct. And the two buildings, yes. Yeah. There's wow. two con two condos in the big big house and uh two in the smaller house. That's incredible. Affordable housing is such a huge issue. I think it was just over the summer sometime, a report came out that 
anywhere in the United States. You could live anywhere and be working full time on minimum wage and you would not be able to afford a one bedroom apartment anywhere in the United States. There's just such a, a shortage of housing that's affordable to families, even single people who are um, just getting out of college. You can't afford to live anywhere. It's so challenging to find that. So having this right here in downtown Northborough is incredible. So, so how did you decide to get to get to? I'm just curious. A, a couple of things. First of all, how did you decide to get Habitat involved? And and secondly, what would they? If you, you guys are thinking back on it, what would the what would the if there were any memorable bumps in the road? Because I know I've done so in my <laughs> in my in my previous. So before I started focusing on elder law, most of my life I dealt with real estate development, right? And I, there's a lot of bumps in that ro in those roads, right? So, so I'm just curious if you could just tell us, kind of what what you know from your experience, and, you know, what 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 if were there any times where you just thought this is just not going to work, you know, and and you know there there were real problems. Just curious. Uh, there were many times uh, during the, as far as uh, how did Habitat get involved. I think that was more a matter of a, the affordable housing uh, had some funds available, but they had no, not enough means to be able to bring it up to date to to the proper standards. And uh, somehow along the line that uh, Habitat also was contacted. Uh, they had a great interest in doing a project and uh, they had some, the means, the, some of the funds able and the labor, uh, volunteer label, labor available yeah. to uh, carry out the project. Uh, it turned out the whole project started to uh, be just rehab. In fact, the, the big house had settled that was in such a shape, uh, uh, such a shape that uh, we literally rebuilt that house from the inside out. Almost everything there is all brand new. There are a few of the old posts and beams still there, but by and large, it's all brand new built. It was a much bigger task than they anticipated. <laughs> there were many conversations among us regular. We call them us. Larry and I both are now listed as regular since we volunteered for some time uh, at Habitat. And uh, there were many conversations among the regulars about uh, why didn't we just tear down the whole thing and start all over? Might have been easier, quicker. <laughs> <laughs> But we got in the middle of it and just carried it out. And uh, it's quite a building on the inside. Uh, it's all up to, like I say, all the standards. And uh, it's a very nice, very nice facility at this point. The, the other reason we, we turned to Habitat was previously the buildings had been rentals, but privately owned. And there was a lot of trouble between them and the church. Um, and so the whole goal of the original purchase of, of those buildings was to get affordable housing and have some control over the situation being right. that they're so uh, uh, adjacent to each other. And uh, when we went to sell, um, we, we kept that in mind and we decided we didn't want to turn it or sell it to just and turn it back into rental property and, and not have the control. And the, uh, a number of us had had some experience in the past with, with Habitat and working with Habitat. And they have the uh, goal that they pre-qualify the buyers of these properties. Uh, these people have to put in sweat equity into what they do in the house. And a lot of hours, I forget the exact number, but there's a lot of hours of sweat equity they have to put in. So there's some ownership and some pride, and the houses stay in control of that of habitat, um, and they can only sell it for 
a small percentage above what they paid for it. So there's no escalation of prices. So this keeps it as affordable housing forever. And, and Habitat is a great owner of these buildings. Um, so we felt that that was the absolute right thing for Northboro and Fraternity Church going forward. And can, can you and can you talk about how the sweat equity thing works? So it's, so basically, they had people who wanted to be buyers, but they they agreed as a condition of the eventual purchase that they would that they would put in a given amount of time into the building. Is that how? So I I, had, I hadn't heard of that before. That's, that sounds like a pretty novel approach. It it, it is the uh, the the way they do it is is people will apply to Habitat for ownership. And, you know, I, I don't know how many they had, but obviously they only had four units, so they had a lot of people apply. And those people uh, were conditionally accepted, but then they have to put in, like, Don, tell me, is it like 500 hours? It's between four and 500 hours, yes. Wow. Of sweat equity at some at some habitat site doesn't have to be that one yeah but it has to be at some habitat site um and a bunch of them actually did work and remember this this the reconstruction project took almost two years closer to three ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes now it all comes out now it all comes. yeah oh. yeah it was uh yeah it was and it was enjoyable working along with these people and hearing their story of, you know, uh, kind of why they are where they are, uh, but their, their want to get into uh, a better situation than they had been prior to this opportunity. And uh, yeah. uh, it, uh, it turns out right now in that big house, Whereas we had four one bedroom apartments before the project uh, uh, happened, we now have a three bedroom, two bath on the first floor. We have a five bedroom, three baths on the second and third floors. Uh, so that's uh, especially that last unit. I mean, that's quite a unit. Uh, to have that available and affordable for someone that needs that type of uh, uh, facility. And That's say great. they're definitely bought in because because they're the ones who worked on it. You know, they they may very well have spent a lot of their time on that very on that very house, right? Spending, right. Just spending a lot of just spending a lot of time. <laughs> yes. Yes. The, what's Trinity's next big project? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with all the with all the profits that you made from this one, what are you what are you, what are you, what are you going to do next? Well, uh, Larry and I are both have continued our work at Habitat. Uh, they presently we are building a new triplex up in Worcester, uh, creating three new condos, affordable housing. It's a, but it's a brand new building up there. It's up on Harrison Street. And uh, we about have the first and second walls all put up. Uh, we'll soon be putting the roof on and uh, be going from there. We'll be, you know, we'll go ahead and complete that project. Uh, I don't believe the potential red and future residents have been chosen in that case yet so we haven't seen any uh, of the uh, potential owners future owners uh, in that project but uh, we started with bear a bear and we're gonna put a we're putting a big building on there for you know three new families to have uh, better housing the, the other major project we've taken on, and, and Don and I were part of this, uh, we were a team of four. We renovated the Trinity kitchen and uh, brought it up to today's standards uh, to better serve 
the community of Northboro. Uh, Trinity hosts a community meals every Wednesday night. Um, and so the kitchen is a very vital part of that. We spent a year rehabbing it, uh, put a sizable chunk of money in, brought it all up to code. Um, speaking of oopses, you know, you open up the floor uh, <laughs> and you find that there's uh, a lot of damage in the beams underneath and had to do a lot of reconstruction there. But the, uh, the kitchen came up and running and, and, uh, uh, and two weeks later, COVID hit. <laughs> <laughs> So we haven't been able to use the kitchen. <laughs> but you're still doing commun community meals. Ways to serve the Northboro community uh, since the church is so centered in, in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. so I guess, can I just have, can I have a, as a general question, th those are both really important things, what Trinity Church is doing and what Habitat is doing. If, if folks are watching... And there's a lot of, you know, Frank and there's a lot of Frank and Marys. And it, you know, of course, from our generation, mainly Franks who had construction experience. Right. And who may be retired and may want to be involved. Right. Yeah. So is there a it, you know, how how would they find, you know, the habitat or how would they find Trinity just to just to connect in? The the habitat, you can just go to the habitat website. Habitat yeah. for Um and they have a whole section on how you can get involved and people can go um, and, and work on site. Uh, all of the regulars that come and volunteer are all retired people with experience, but there are pe retired people that come and learn experience as they work on site. Right. Right. Um, unfortunately, with COVID, the number of people they can have on site are, are small recently. Um, but they're still open for volunteers. So people should go to the ha Habitat for Humanity website and uh, find out how to volunteer. Great. That's great. Well, Liz, this is certainly this is certainly a wonderful, I think an eye opener. This may be an eye opener for a lot of folks in Northbrook, because I'm sure have driven by those buildings, you know, for years and said, wonder what's going on? <laughs> what the heck are they doing, right? So, right. Right. But but to give a lot of once again, a lot of the Franks and Marys in this world, you know, who are who are really want back, you know, and maybe they can't do it right now. I mean, COVID's a tough time for seniors, you know, but 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 that this is going to end, you know, like everything else, this is going to end. Right. This, too, will be yeah. history. And to, to know that that there's a there are these really useful things that they can get involved. With, it's just terrific. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Larry, and thank you, Don, for coming on and telling us more about the project and about Habitat for Humanity. And if people want to learn more about how to get involved with Trinity Church, do they? Can they just call, email? Uh, they can. They can call or then go on to our website, TrinityChurchOfNorthRoad.com. Uh, TrinityChurchOfNorthRoad.com. Yes. Great. Well, listen, thank you very, very much for both coming on. Liz, thank you once again for finding some great people. I think this is this is not only an individual project that could be of, in, is of interest to a lot of people, but it may be a real place that some folks may decide they want to be involved in the future, right? Who knows? Maybe they get to be a, yeah. called a regular eventually, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the pay scale is tremendous. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> So, Liz, thank you very much. Jeff. The emotional outtake is is superb. Is superb. Is superb. So, thank you very much, Liz. Thank you very much, and folks, thank you very sorry, much sorry. for watching. And we'll look forward to seeing you seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Thank you. <laughs>